What's going on guys, it's Jay. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new, welcome. I typically post car content around my modified Audi S3. And before we start, I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. So if you do see this video and you enjoy it, please feel free to follow. And if you didn't like it, leave me a comment and let me know why. So maybe I can make my videos better. So today, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but the summer is gone and we have officially entered boo season. It's 10.5 degrees. And that's 10.5 degrees of cool, dense, power producing air. So I am just gonna take a drive to the gym and the topic of the video is going to be my current car, stage two, Audi S3. And I, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, that is a downpipe and a tune essentially with a cold air intake. And I also am now linking all of the mods that I have in my car in the description below if you're interested. But the topic is stage two, Audi S3, or an RS3. And for the sake of this conversation, we are going to talk about a stock RS3. And of course, we will talk about the possibility of modifying. Um, well, let me just try to clear this window off quickly because I'm not gonna be able to drive if I can't see. This is one of the downsides of boost season, unfortunately, having foggy windows in the morning. So, currently, I am stage two. And if anybody watching has seen my channel up until this point, you would know that I really love this car. And I don't, well, I do have a complaint. We'll talk about that. But for the, for the most part, I don't have any real complaints about this car. I absolutely love it. I drive it every chance I get. I've had it for two and a half years now, and it still puts a smile on my face every time I get in. But <clears throat> for the last probably year, um, the idea of getting out of this car and buying an RS3 has been in my mind. You know, the seeds were planted um, probably over a year ago, maybe even longer. I've had the car for over two years now, um, closing in probably on two and a half years. And we will be talking about the 8V RS3 here. The 8Y, too expensive um, here in Canada. It'll probably be the same in the States, but they're going to be going for close to $90,000 Canadian when they do re-release um, this upcoming year. And it's just way too much money for me personally um, to be able to spend on a car. So we will be talking about the 8V S3 Stage 2 and the 8V RS3. So there's gonna be pros and cons here as with anything in life. And I think when making a decision, obviously one of the first logical steps is to go through that list of pros and cons. So the pros of this car, uh, there's a lot, there really is a lot. So if you're, <clears throat> if you're somebody that, is, that doesn't own either of these cars and you're trying to like work through this decision yourself, from my point of view where I'm sitting, for the vast majority of people, I think, uh, and, and this is like, um, given you want a car that is faster than a stock S3, so you would be looking at modifying the S3 and you just aren't looking stock for stock. But for the vast majority of people, I really think a stage two S3 is gonna be the choice like every single time. And the reason is because the cost you can get because of the depreciation <clears throat> of most Audis that are not RS models, you can get an S3 8V with fairly low mileage or kilometers for like 30 grand Canadian or 35 grand Canadian. And that's gonna give you a, a given that the maintenance was done, it wasn't abused, which you know, it's gonna be impossible to know, but you can look at the service record and, you know, have the car inspected. But it's gonna give you a pretty freaking reliable car that looks great, has a pretty nice interior, especially for the money, and it has a ton of potential for power. Versus the RS3, which is significantly more expensive. Um, you know, it's gonna cost more to maintain. And if something goes wrong with that engine, you are gonna be in a lot of trouble if you don't have warranty. So that's it, let's hop into my pros and cons. So, so far with this S3, 
I have not had, and let me preface this entire quick talk here with the fact that I really, 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 really want an RS3. I absolutely love that car. I consider it a realistic dream car for myself, but, um, and I like, I even like two weeks ago, I'm like, I'm getting one. And I still kind of feel that way. Like I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get one, it's a matter of when. But just thinking logically about the situation, um, pros and cons. <clears throat> this car has given me no problems, aside from something that I did myself, which was a small coolant leak when installing the intake. Um, Integrated engineering, it's cold air intake is amazing by the way. I've got some videos just uh, showcasing the sound and stuff, but I've really had no issues with the car and it's been relatively cheap to maintain, uh, especially for like a performance car, I guess budget performance car, entry level performance car, whatever you want to call it. But because this S3 shares a platform with the Volkswagen Golf R, that means that parts are going to be cheaper, they're going to be a lot easier to come by. The engine that's in this car, the EA888 engine, is in a ton of other Volkswagen VAG cars. <clears throat> so if in the event you do have an issue with your engine, it's not going to be the end of the world. Obviously, engine problems are always going to be expensive, especially if you're looking at getting a new engine or doing a rebuild. But it really pales in comparison to what would happen if you had an RS3 that didn't have warranty, which when you're looking at a car that's used... Um, you know, warranty, a good warranty is not always an option. And if you're going to modify the car, then you definitely aren't going to have warranty. Such is the case with this. No warranty on the engine uh, because I am modified and tuned. So that, that right there um, is a huge pro for the S3. Going to be a lot cheaper to own, um, you know, especially if something goes wrong. The second thing is the overall cost obviously we already talked about this but you can get an s3 for twenty thousand dollars canadian um, even sometimes depending on the mileage and year twenty five thousand dollars cheaper than you can get an 8v rs3 that's a huge amount of money that's almost that's almost the amount of money of buying another s3 you know you can have a you could have an s3 that you want to modify and beat up and then have a backup s3 they keep stock for the same price as getting like a really clean AV RS3. And for my position personally, I am financing this car and I will have it paid off in about two and a half years, I think. So that's another thing. I do have uh, probably around $10,000 in equity um, on the car between what I own, what its value is. So I would be looking at taking on like another 10,000, potentially $15,000 of debt if I, and that's right, given right now. Um, I am thinking of looking at RS3s next summer when the new one gets released. So, you know, the market could be different. I don't, I'm not really sure if the if the AV prices are, are gonna come down too much, but as of right now, given this scenario, um, I would be looking at taking on another 10 to $15,000 of debt. And the question that I have in the back of my mind is, is it really worth it, um, you know, when comparing these two cars? The, the, the huge thing for me is sound. The, the sound that that five cylinder makes, in my opinion, is like, there's not many things that sound as amazing as that car sounds. And then it's just really a special car too, right? Like it's a five cylinder, there's very few companies I'm not even sure of any other companies that are making the five cylinder um, outside of Volkswagen Audi but it, it really is a special car and I think the resale value is going to carry over a lot more compared to the s3 and that's only an issue if you do plan on selling or you know if you're thinking ahead um, maybe something happens where you're forced to get rid of the car because of life circumstances so that's another thing that that the rs3 has over the s3 is it's definitely going to hold its value just because it is a special car and the s3 although i do consider the s3 a special car um it definitely doesn't hold its value quite as much and just to give you an illustration of that i purchased this car during kind of the peak of covid which is a little unfortunate but uh the peak of covid pricing but as a result of that i was able to get the same amount for my camaro 
that I had paid for a year and a half prior to that. So um, it kind of balanced itself out. But since I purchased the car, it in the last two and a half years, this car has lost like $10,000 in value. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, it won't be as much of an issue if you're buying one that is a little bit older with a little more kilometers so that depreciation the large depreciation hit has already happened um you know i purchased this car at around 16,000 kilometers i believe or maybe 20,000 kilometers so it was still pretty new at the time and it was about two years old when i bought it so if i had picked up a, a year older with slightly higher kilometers i would have been able to avoid some of that depreciation but that's just something to consider as well the s3 will depreciate significantly more than the rs3 so with all of these things in mind the question still remains um and let's talk about power actually too before i end this out i am currently at by integrated engineering numbers 425 horsepower and 460 foot pound torque so that is is it, it you know adjusting the gearing and, and everything but i'm basically at the power level of a stock rs3 i do think a stock rs3 is still a bit quicker in a quarter mile um <clears throat> but for all intents and purposes i'm pretty much there so you know is it worth spending that money to get the way better sound just that overall s s experience of being in a special car and then you know obviously the potential for tuning but again, I do have this fear of, you know, buying an RS3, spending that money, falling in love with the car, and uh, ultimately tuning the car because, you know, as car people, we can't help ourselves. Um, and then having something go wrong with the engine and then being in a position where I'm going to have to spend potentially 40, you know, 30, 40,000 dollars Canadian on a new engine with labor it may it may not be that high you know maybe it's like 25 30 but it's a significant amount of money and you know that's just something that that's been in the back of my mind but you know thanks for listening guys uh if you have any thoughts opinions on this matter if you're in a similar position um feel free to drop a comment below i do respond to all the comments and uh if you made it this far thanks a lot for watching and quick note i've some people have asked about this app it's integrated engineering's PowerLink app as you can see and this app does come free with um with their tunes so thanks for watching y'all uh more content on the way and i'm just gonna go hit uh actually just cardio today cardio and abs boring day but thanks for watching i'll see y'all in the next video thanks